awakening was going to be something completely different today. Um, I had it all planned. I'd done a really cheerful awakening for you guys in the garden. Had it all planned. Uh, it was all going to be about uprooting and growing things. And yet the, the opposite happened today. The opposite of growing things. Huge tragedy that just came from nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And so my job is to go out there and to help us negotiate the dark and the huge, huge darkness hit today. Huge darkness hit in a very unexpected way. Um, and as I said, we have to expect We have to expect anything these days. We're at war, guys. This is World War Three, and there's nothing we can do about it except become very, very strong. And just very quickly, my best friend's fiance's family had, a ter had the tragedy, terrible tragedy. And that's the three children that died in the fire three years old, six years old, and 12 years old, Rob, with the mother in a coma. Gone, just like that, gone. Finish. And I just found out about it, and what do you say? What do you say? And the first reaction is, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm not going on there, I'm not doing anything. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do the awakening. Why should I bother? I mean, look at it. How could that be? How can I comfort her? How can I comfort her partner? She, she's like my sister. She's been the, the, the real sister to me. We're so close. And it was like, I don't get it. And how can I use this in some way to help you guys? How can I use this to take us all from the dark into the light? I can't give up. You know, I've known people that have gone through tragedy. We've all gone through tragedy. My husband went through terrible tragedy when he was young. We've all gone through these tragedies, but I've never known anything so devastating to be close to home like this. And so part of me, that side of me, the ego says, you can't smile, you can't work, you can't carry on. How can you do that when your best friend is going through hell? And I can't even be there with her and give her a hug because she lives in Scotland. And so the ego is saying, I'm useless. And that's the darkness. And then the spirit comes in and says, you're, you're there, you're full of love, you, you can call her. And not only that, I'm here to teach, I'm here to help you guys. If I go under, What happens to the work? What happens to what I'm trying to give you? So today, I'm going to talk about Buddhism and attachments and grief. I think we have been brought up to be miserable whenever anybody dies or anyone leaves us, if there's abandonment, we're brought up to grieve everything. We're brought up that every time we lose something, whether it's a job or a person or a pet, anything, we go into total shock. And that's how we've been brought up. We've been brought up with attachments. 
we're attached to everything. We're attached to this flesh and blood. We're attached to the places we live in. We're attached to the cars we drive. We're attached to everything. We're attached to people, places, and things. Continuously attached, attached, attached. Buddhism teaches us that that is the way to misery. They call it dukkha. Dukkha is misery. Because the more you're attached, the more miserable you're going to be. That's how we're brought up. Now, I get the feeling that we don't really know what's coming in the next few months, the next six months. It could be anything. And I think we're being told to learn how to get strong inside on our own. I can't imagine what my friend and her fiancé are going through. I can't imagine when that mother, if she ever wakes up, she's not going to want to live because that's how we are conditioned. I can't imagine. I've had one friend whose son got killed and she was celebrating their life, but I can't imagine if you lose every single child. This is grief. We're all going to react differently. But all I can say to you is every single day needs to be precious. This is coming into the light. Make every single day of your life special. Make every single moment of your life precious. Be grateful every single moment of your pets, your friends, your animals, your home, your garden, whatever it is. This body. Be grateful every single moment but understand that it could go within a flash of light. You could be gone. I could be gone. They could be gone. We're at war. Now, I'm not saying that this particular tragedy happened because of the people that were the thing we're at war with, but in a roundabout way, it is, it is because it's the system. Something went wrong somewhere in the system same well as Grenfell people get sacrificed all the time you've been sacrificed is this connected to the ridiculous nonsense lockdown that they put us in for a non-contagious virus is this why this happened I don't know because I don't know the facts all I'm saying is you could be gone and I hope this isn't something you're going to turn off from because you need to wake up now and start to love everything that you do, that you are. Fall in love with life. I'm on here now because I love you moving on TV, because I love you. I love humanity and I love what I do. And I'm asking spirit, how? How can I, what can I give? What comfort can I give? What comfort can I give? In such dreadful, painful times that are happening, in order to gain our emancipation, in order to gain the beautiful world that we deserve, sacrifices are being made, whether it's from that lot that we are fighting, or whether it's because that is life. The same way as people died during the virus, people die all the time. But this was some kind of sacrifice through the system. And these wildfires don't watch with me either. Because there's too many coincidences. Again, it's, taken, it's another distraction to take your mind off the real stuff. The media does not want you to know. taking you from the dark into the light. All I can say to you is celebrate every second of your life. Every second, say thank you. Say thank you for being here on this planet alive. But understand that you could be gone. I could be gone in a minute. You could be gone in a minute. Everything can change so quickly. 
Because all we are, that part of us is flesh and blood. That's all it is. What's left afterwards is what we really are. The spirit, the real us, the love, the connection. Whatever that other part is trying to fight against, to take our innocence, our love, our humanity, our compassion. But you need to learn to detach with love. Because I just want to sit there crying now and I be don't want to bother. Don't, there's a part of me that says, you know what? Can't be bothered. No, they say that word on maybe on TV. But I don't care. What's the point? But then the other part of me says, you can't give up, Lauren. What good is it going to do to you and maybe that one or two or 30 people that watch this, if I give up? What good is it going to do to the people that my friends, if I give up? I want to know why that happens. To bring it into the light. I want to know what, what happened. How did that happen? What neglect, neglect system, disgusting, greedy system created such a terrible tragedy? I want to know the truth. The media isn't going to give it to you. They'll give you the facts and they'll focus on the negative helplessness and they will not look for solutions because they don't care. They don't want solutions. They just want problems. I want solutions. So it never happens again. When I sat there today trying to pull out that root, which was so stubborn and I could not get it out of the ground, that is the pollution. That is the negativity. That is the system, the greed of this system that lets these things happen. As I say, remember Grenfell Towers? Similar. They can't happen anymore. We can't let our world be like this. We have to stop this. We have to end this. Never should you go back and do a job where you earn a thousand pounds a month and then give it to a landlord. Maybe the landlord neglected them. Who knows, but this is something to do with a system that doesn't work. How else can three children die in a house fire in 2020? How is that possible? It's not. And, but you see, if this wasn't close to my friend and my heart, I wouldn't be talking about this now because of my attachment, because I love her and I love her partner. And there to me, the family, she's been there for me for God knows how long now. Always, always, always the best friend and, and sister that I could have. And I am so impotent to know what to do. What do I do? But if it wasn't her, I wouldn't be doing this now but it's an attachment, it's she, I care about her, I love her, she's my friend, she's my soul sister, very, very close sister, more than I've ever had in my life, with all due respect to the sister I was born to. This woman and I, were, were, we were perfect. She's a Libra and I'm a Leo, so no more. She's been there for me, Forever. Yeah. And now I'm there for her. But as I said, if this wasn't an attachment and close to my heart, I couldn't do this. And if this was closer to me, I don't expect I could have gone on moving on TV today at all. Because that's what we do. We create attachments. And when these people or places or things are taken away from us, we suffer incredible, as I say, like in Buddhism, it's called dukkha. We suffer so much dukkha. And so we need to start to understand from now on, every single day is a gift, but you don't know what's coming.
the world is in turmoil. You know, that to win this war, there's going to be sacrifices. It could be me, it could be you, we don't know. Anything, anything. To win this war is going to be, we don't know. But at some point you will win, but you've got to get those roots out, like I was doing today with the gardening. That stubborn, stubborn root, which tomorrow I'll put on, I can't put it on today, it's not suitable. So grief, my friends, huge grief, huge attachments. I went into huge grief when I, um, my dad died and my family cut me off. And I didn't come out of it for three years. Maybe four years, really. When I got back to doing my work properly. But you can't put a time scale on grief, however, the more we learn that people, places and things are only here temporarily, as is this flesh and blood. Today, of course, the miracles is all things are echoes for the voice of love. God is love to me. All things are echoes for the voice of love. Everything that happens, everything that happens in our world, of course, the miracles mainly, I'd say, is to teach us how to try to be a little bit happier because when all the shit hits the fan and it is when your celebrities are going to be arrested when you're going to wake up one day and they're not going to be there anymore these people you idolize that are really evil the shit will hit the fan in such a big way when you see the pain of what these things have done to our world really done to our world all things are echoes for the voice of love. It's trying to tell you something. It's trying to tell you to wake up, not just to wake up, to understand that the world is being run on an evil, something really evil to put over. And we are fighting for our lives, for humanity. But the light is telling you, taking you from the dark into a light. There is a better way. Buddha taught it. Jesus taught it. It's all about understanding that this is not real. It doesn't last. Nothing is going to last. Everything will go. So love everything in this moment. Love. Open your heart and love. Open your throat and say the truth. Never, ever hold back. On the truth so I don't know if this has helped in any way I hope it does I'm just trying to ask you to enjoy every second of your life every second of your life because you don't know when it will end every second say thank you thank you thank you every second celebrate and love what you do make everything count don't do a job that you hate don't stay in a relationship that is making you miserable wake up life is too precious for that don't let anyone hold you down in any way and force you to be a slave again Let go of your attachments. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I'm there for you as much as I can be at the moment. I'm weary. I'm scared. I'm devastated. I can't even get my friend on the phone. Unless she's just probably just turned her phone off. She sent me a message and that's it. I, I, how could it be? How could it be so close to home? But it is. And my lessons, I know my lessons. I have to carry on. We all have to carry on. I pray for protection for every single one of us. I shield us in the violet flame and I pray that the angels are surrounding all of us. And the only thing I can say is that I pray that the souls of us three beautiful children and their mother 
bring something to its knees and change something for better in our world that there's got to be something behind it there's got to be a message and a meaning nothing nothing is just a sacrifice anymore nothing it can't be it won't be i won't let it and if no one else goes out there and digs then moving on tv will so if you have any information about what happened with this house fire not the wildfires because that to me is just the carry the continuation of the film as i said another part another series in the cabal fighting back sacrifice fire lucifer fire but what happened what happened what neglect or what happened why did that happen i need to know i need to know so it can never happen again that's the other thing. Coming into the light is we are looking for solutions every time. We fix our world up. We dig up the roots of the shit that this world has been since before we were born from the beginning of time. And we never, ever let it go back to what it was. You watch the signs. Like we never watch the signs. I saw the signs. The signs were so obvious. We were progressing towards the same thing again, over and over and over. Repeating your patterns. Do you repeat your patterns? Or do you say, I ain't having it. I do not consent. Enough is enough. I'm walking away now and it's not going to happen again. The sacrifice that has happened today in Paisley or yesterday of that innocence. Why did it happen? I'm not talking about a spiritual thing where it happens for a reason and it wakes people up and but we need to know the practicalities what happened at Grenfell why does a fire happen like that in a house with three children and a mother why did it happen was it connected to this stupid lockdown why did it happen now that's what I want to know if you've got any information please email me moving on tv one at gmail.com I will not do anything to hurt the feelings of my beautiful friends and, her fa and their family. But I want to know the truth, don't you? Because the media won't give it to you. They will just give you the problem and they'll sink you into their helplessness. Moving on TV is looking for the light, to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Where is this light? How can you stop it from ever happening again without being callous? here i can't express how i feel at the moment as i say i'm about solutions we need to know how to end this the same way i healed the mental illness because i understood my patterns and i was able to change them i love you lots enjoy every second of your life please Come on board moving on TV and help us find solutions so that these tragedies never ever happen again. We know that landlords, a lot of the time, they don't care at all about their tenants. If you have usually landlords, there's no heating. I've seen single mums where I've, the heating fund, we gave them money because they had nothing. What happened here? Landlords are callous and greedy and cruel a lot of the time. Well, look at the money they charge people. People are drowning. That's the awakening. We need to wake up now and end this. Never again to sacrifice so much innocence. And so many children have been sacrificed in this world. I know that. So many children have been sacrificed by this evil cabal. And now they sacrifice another three plus a mother to satisfy the greed that they are. The greed machine, we know that. What else could it be? What else could it be? A young mum and her three kids. Terrible. Today I dedicate the awakening to their memory I dedicate the solution to their memory. I need to know 
don't you? Please contact me if you've got any idea at all of why this happened so we can go out there and stop it ever happening again. People just live like slaves because they don't know that they deserve better. The choices have been taken away from them. The whole salary, taxes, credit cards that take 100%. It's got to end. It's got to end every day I get up. And they don't go to bed at night to fight this system, to bring the light. It's got to end. Let me know how we can do this together. As I say, if you've got any information, please email me. Moving on to you, one at gmail.com.